Hey George. Hey. What? I think you have got one. Huh? Pull the rod when I say. Pull the rod. Pull it. Woohoo! Look at that. Look at the fish I've caught. Yeah. Wow, George. That's a big one. This is so big. <laughs> I think we have got enough for the day. Now let's take it home and ask your mom to cook it for us. Mom is going to be so happy today. All right. I will hold the fish. You pack your things and let's walk back. Father, in the class yesterday, you told us that Hosea experienced the pain of loving as God did. Why did you say that? That's because Hey, do you want to hear the story of Hosea as we walk back home? Yes, father. Tell us the story, please. All right. Now listen carefully. Hosea was the last prophet sent to Israel. He was a man who experienced the depth of God's love and the bitterness of betrayal. He lived at a time when the country was in a total mess. All the evils that Amos had warned the people of Israel about had now become widespread and was common everywhere. Murder and robbery had become very common. Poor were forced into slavery. Priests and judges instead of teaching the laws got greedy for profit and encouraged corruption. And against the commandments, God and the idol of Baal were worshipped in the same altar. One day at the palace, people were celebrating the coronation of Prince Zechariah, the people. O oh Lord Baal, Lord of fertility, accept our offerings and bless us. <sighs> I can't watch this anymore. Prophet to blame, why don't you say anything against this cruelty? I... I'm an old man. What can I do? Hosea, I'm heartbroken. Why are you crying, master? Do you see that woman dancing over there? Wow, she's such a beauty. But, but she's a prostitute. What about her? She? Huh? She's my daughter, Hosea. What? But how? How did she end up like that? The king and the priests are forcing all the beautiful women in the country into prostitution. She, she had no choice. And I could do nothing to help her. Oh no! Don't worry, master. Everything is going to be all right. Hosea! I want you to do me a favor, can you? What is it, master? Can you take her away from this place? Take her with you. Save her, please. Hosea didn't know what to say that day, but he sure knew what to do the next day, because that night, the very same night Prophet Diblaim asked him to rescue his daughter, God appeared to Hosea. Hosea. Huh? God? Hosea, go and marry the prostitute. Israel has become a prostitute by abandoning me. I will do as you say, my lord. Hosea was a firm follower of God. And the next day, he went to the temple to meet Goma, the daughter of Prophet Diblaim. Shh! 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 Goma! Huh? Goma, here. Who are you? I will tell you. Come with me to the gardens. All right. You go ahead. I have seen you before. You are priest from Samaria, isn't it? No, 
I'm neither a priest of Baal and I'm not from Samaria. Then who are you? My name is Hosea and I'm from Jezreel. Why are you here, Hosea? You, you are so beautiful. What are you staring at? Tell me why you are here. Listen to me very carefully. Goma, I love you. Love me? Ha! I'm the temple dancer. I don't care about that. I love you so much and I want you to come with me. But what? What are you saying? But don't you know that I'm a temple dancer? I'm a prostitute. I know, Goma, and I also know who made you like this. Those wretched priests and the king. Don't worry, God sees everything. No, it can't be. I have no life of my own. My life is ruined. Goma, Goma, listen. I have your father's blessings. Huh? Yes, let's get out of here. We will go to Jezreel, my home. Nobody will be able to find us there. No, it can't be. I have to go now. They'll be looking for me. Don't worry about that, Goma. Before they realize you are missing, we will be gone. You want to leave right now? Yes, right now. Come with me. I have a horse ready. But, but I have to say a word to my father. Don't worry. I have already told him. That night, both of them fled to Jezreel. Many months and years passed. Many revolutions and war took place. Kings were killed and there were frequent change of power in Israel. The whole country was in an utter chaos. Streets were flooded with dead bodies. What Amos predicted was coming true. In the meantime, Gomer gave birth to a child. Gomer! Come on here. Take a look at our child. He is so beautiful. What are we going to call him? Have you decided on a name yet? Yes, we are going to call him Jezreel. What? Jezreel? But it's the name of a place. Yes, it was a place where Jehu the captain killed the king. I know that, but why that name for our son? Because the captain was unfaithful to his master. He should have loved him and protected him. But instead, he killed his own king. But, but... Don't worry, Goma. We Israelites have become like that captain. Instead of serving the Lord, we have turned our backs against him. Our son's name will remind us the condition of our home and the country. Hosea, please. No, Goma. I have decided. We are going to call our son Jezreel. It was God who asked Hosea to name the child Jezreel. The name reflected how sad Hosea was about the condition of his home. Hosea had become a very sad and grave man. He always prayed to God and was very serious all the time. Hey, look! It's Hosea! Yes! Hosea! Hosea here! Huh? What is it? Come here, Hosea. Let's chat for a while. Yes, come here. You are always looking so serious. I'm sorry, but I can't. I have to go somewhere now. Why? You want to go to another temple? What's the use of praying all day? Come sit here and have fun for a change. No, I can't. Hey, did you hear the name he has kept for his firstborn son? What is it? It's Jezreel. <laughs> but it's the name of a place, isn't it? This guy is crazy. Don't worry about me. I think you should stop ignoring your true God and worship Him instead of making fun of me. Are you saying that Baal is not the true God? You know it, who the God of Israel is. 
and yet you choose to ignore him. You are now running behind idol worship that's against God's commandments. Hey, Hosea, don't let the soldiers hear you talk like this. They will behead you if they hear you insulting our god, Baal. Yes, you can go away, my friend. We don't want to be seen along with you talking. Otherwise, we might get into trouble too. Yeah, go away. We don't want you here. All right, I'm going. People made fun of Hosea because he was always sad and serious. But Hosea was more worried about his God and his country. What Amos predicted was coming true. The kings were killing each other. A few days back, the military commander killed his own king and became the ruler of Samaria. Hosea's wife conceived and gave birth to a daughter. And that night... Hosea... God? Call her name... Loruhama, for I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. I will, Lord. Loruhama. Mother! <laughs> Come here, son. Look at your baby sister. Wow, she's so beautiful. <laughs> Isn't she? Daddy! Dear! My husband! She is really beautiful. We are going to call her Loruhama. What? No! I'm not going to name her that. We are going to call her Sara. No, we can't. You have to agree with me, my dear. But Loruhama? But why do you want to call her that? It's God's wish, my dear. It means no mercy. No mercy? Yes. God wants the people of Israel to know that He will show no mercy on them. He wants them to know that they would get the punishment they deserved. Hosea obeyed God's commands without a question. And in few years, Gomer gave birth to a second son. Call his name Loami, for you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Hey Hosea, what is it? I heard that you named your second son Loami. Yes, I did. Hosea, this is the strangest name we have ever heard. Why don't you call your bows Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, or some respectable name like other folks? Hey. What do you mean by not my people? That's what God commanded me to do. And every time I call my child by that name, it reminds how the people of Israel pushed away our Lord God. It reminds me that we are no longer His people. <laughs> you are crazy, my friend. You should stop being so serious. It's because you are a loner that you keep getting such thoughts. So what do you want me to do? Go with you to your temples and worship Baal? Or do you want me to join you for drinking and wasting away my life? Hey, you need to stop worrying, my friend. There's nothing wrong with having a little fun sometime. No, I'm sorry, but I can't forget the Lord and ignore His commandments. One night, while he was sleeping, he had a dream. A vulture appeared in his dream, and he started following it. What? A vulture? A vulture over the house of Lord? What does it mean? Hosea, the people of Israel have broken my covenant. I am going to punish them according to the covenant. I will start with the priest who defiled my temple. You must go to Samaria immediately. The next day morning, Hosea left for Samaria as God commanded. Do you have to really go? You know I have to, dear. I must follow God's orders. But then what am I going to do with these three little kids? Daddy! How can I resist God's call? I don't understand you. I think, I think you're sick. Otherwise, how can your God be more important than your wife and children? Don't worry, 
you have enough to live. And besides, the neighbors are good too. They will take care of you. But... Trust in God and wait in patience. I will be back soon. <sighs> in a way, I'm happy that he's gone. Nobody can put up with his strange ways. He's always so sad. I'm fed up with this life. I used to have such a fantastic time. We had so much fun. Oh, I really miss those days. I should have never left the temple. After a few days since Hosea left his house, a soldier from Samaria came to Hosea's house. Who are you? Hello, Goma. Don't you recognize me? Huh? You know my name? I know you. Uh, you are... Uh, you, you are Simri. My goodness. <laughs> so you haven't forgotten me? How can I ever forget you? We used to have such a good time. Yes, we did. Come, come inside. Here, Simri, drink this water. Thank you. So tell me, what's the news in Samaria? Oh, it's been really dull since you left the temple. The new girls are not as good as you. Hmm, I miss those days. And your husband, Hosea? What about him? He is crazy. He is going around and cursing everyone like a madman. How can you live with a person like that? Why don't you come with me? Hmm, I'm tired of him. I would love to come with you. That day, Gomer left Hosea's house and went with that soldier. She was so cruel that she sold her children at the slave market and went on to live with that soldier. In the meantime, the rulers of Israel were planning to attack Judah and they were marching towards Jerusalem. The priests in the temple were offering sacrifices to ensure their victory over Judah. O oh God Almighty, please bless and strengthen our army marching against Judah. Stop it! Huh? Hosea, it's you? What's the matter? Judah is our brother and they are begging for peace. Are you offering sacrifices to destroy our own people? It's the king's order. We offer sacrifices for the good of the people. You offer your sacrifices to this peace made in gold. You forcefully take what belongs to poor. Hosea, watch your words. Don't you remember what happened to Amos? I'm not afraid. You consider the prophets mad and you silence them. And now you are threatening me. The day of the disaster is here. Get out of here. Guards, take him away. Leave me. Ugh. You defile the country with your crimes. The fire of God's wrath is coming from the north. It will purify this land. My house, what happened? It's all gone. What happened here? My wife, my children, where have they all gone? Hey, is it you, Hosea? Yes. Do you know what happened to my wife and children? Hosea, I'm so sorry to tell you this. After you left, your wife stayed around for a while. But one day, a soldier from Samaria came and she left with him. Goma, why did you? And my children, what happened to my children? Oh, Hosea, I didn't realize that Goma was so cruel. She sold her children in the slave market and she enjoyed with the money she got. She stayed with that soldier for two months. But then he got bored with her and he left her. Oh no! I heard she's a slave now somewhere. I'm sorry, Hosea. You must try to forget her. Oh, Goma, how could you be so cruel? How could you forget me after I saved you from that temple? You don't know how to be a faithful wife. And our children, how could you do that to them? 
Hosea was heartbroken. The person he loved the most had left him. He now truly understood the pain of God. He understood how it felt like when someone you loved turned their backs on you. Oh no, my kids, my darling. No, I'm not going to let her go. I'm not going to rest until I find you. You are mine. I'm coming for you. Hosea traveled for many days searching for Goma. He didn't rest and he went under a lot of pain. And one day, he finally learned that she was working at a house in Bethel as a slave. Hello, sir. Who are you? My name is Hosea. I heard that my wife Goma is working here. What? <laughs> so Gomer has a husband? I can't believe it. You may laugh as much as you want, sir, but I want my wife back. All right, all right. You can have her. No problem. But you will have to pay me. I'm ready to pay you. How much do you want? Give me 50 shekels of silver and I'll let her go. Hosea paid for Gomer's release and he released Gomer. Gomer! My husband! Dear, you're looking so miserable. I'm so sorry. I should have never left you. Come with me, dear, and never leave me again. No, I, I don't deserve such love. Don't say that. Our life is a symbol of Israel. All these happen to us so that the world can understand what Israel's sin is and our Lord's love for us. I have been taught a great lesson today. Israel is like an unfaithful woman. She went after other gods and idols, but our Lord will never abandon her. Even as I love you, in spite of all your sins, so does God love all his people in spite of their wickedness. So he learned the lesson that even when God is greatly displeased at us, he loves us and when we return to him, he will receive us. Wow! Wow! And what about their children? Did he get them back? Yes, he bought them back from the slave market and he got them home. That was a great story, father. You liked it? Yes. All right. Mm, this fish looks quite tasty. I'm hungry. I'm gonna start eating. No, no, wait. Let's finish with the questions and then we'll start, okay? Yes, father. All right. Now tell me who was Gomer's father? Gomer was the daughter of Prophet Dibley. That's correct. What was the name of Hosea's children? Lucy, can you tell me the name of his first son? Hosea's first son was named Jezreel. And why was he named that? Hosea named him after the place named Jezreel, where Jehu, the captain, killed his own king. That's correct, Lucy. And now, George, you tell me the name of his daughter. Hosea named his daughter Lo Ruhma, which meant no pity. That's correct, George. Can you also name his second son? His second son was named Lo Ami, which meant not my people. That's very good. That's all for today. We can start with the food now. Father, which story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Oh, yes. I will tell you the story of a farmer who rose to protest against the violence and injustice. The story of Mika. Now, let's stop talking and concentrate on the food now. I'm hungry too. Good morning, children. Good morning, Father. So you heard the story of Daniel and Susanna yesterday. Did you like it? Yes, yes Father. <laughs> and today I'm going to tell you the story of Esther. Now listen carefully. In the land of Susa, the capital of Persian Empire, there lived an exiled Jew named Mordecai. He was a kind man who was faithful to God. One day, oh, oh, oh. that was a scary dream. Hmm. Let me take a walk. 
and I will go to sleep later. Huh? Aren't they king's gods? What are they doing here at this time? The king is going to die tomorrow. Ha 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 ha! What? Look at this! This is a powerful poison. I will mix this in his breakfast tomorrow and he will be dead in no time. Brilliant! Just make sure that no one sees you. I will take care of that. You can go and inform our master that his enemy will be no more. <laughs> I will, and he will be very pleased to hear this. He had been waiting for so long. All right then, I will see you tomorrow. They are planning to poison the king. They must be stopped somehow. I will inform this to the king right away. Mordecai informed about their plot to the king Ahasuerus. The king gave orders to arrest them immediately. Take these men and hang them tomorrow at the city gates. Let people see how we punished the traitors. Take them away. Mordecai, I thank you for your service. I would have been dead tomorrow if not for your help. It was my duty to inform you, my lord. Minister! Yes, sir. Mordecai shall be granted ten talents of gold. He need not pay taxes for the rest of his life. Do you hear me? Yes, my lord. Ten talents of gold and lifetime extension from paying taxes. Hmm. Write this order in a tablet and keep it in the archives. Yes, my lord. But no one knew that it was Haman, one of King's advisor, who had sent the guards to kill him. You fool. It was me who sent them. You ruined my plans and you killed my servants. You will pay for this with your life. Just wait and watch. After some time, King Ahasuerus decided that he needed a new wife. He sent his soldiers across the nation searching for suitable maidens. Anyone interested in becoming the next queen should be ready tomorrow. You will be taken to the palace for training and selection. Hmm. Next queen, huh? I will ask Esther to go. Mordecai had a young niece named Esther. She had lost her parents when she was a child. And Mordecai had brought her up like his own child. Esther was very beautiful and she was devoted to God. Why are you so late today? King's messengers were in town. They are searching for a new queen. New queen? Yes. Esther, King's men will come tomorrow to select the queen. You must go with them. What? But, uh, but we are Jews. Will the king accept a Jewish woman? Don't worry. They are not bothered by race and religion. But I'm scared. Fear not, my child. The Lord is with you. He will protect you. All right, father. Let it be according to his will. And the next morning, the king's men came to collect Esther. Remember, my child, you should never forget your people when you are blessed. I will, father. I shall always be grateful. God, please protect her. Many beautiful girls were selected from various parts of the empire and brought to the palace. Esther was one among them. Thank you all for coming. You can consider yourselves very lucky to be among the selected few. In a few days time, one among you will be selected to become the next queen. There are so many of them. Each day, one among them were taken to the king. But king rejected each of them for various reasons.
Finally, it was the turn of Esther to be presented to the king. Sir, I'm so afraid. Am I dressed properly? Should I put on any ornaments? Don't worry, dear. You are beautiful without any ornaments. I'm sure the king is going to like you. What is your name, lady? My name is Esther, my lord. Hmm. Come closer. Don't be afraid. You're so beautiful, Esther. Where do you come from? I'm from Susa, my lord. Hmm. I like you, Esther. I have decided to marry you and make you my queen. Thank you, Your Majesty. I I'm so happy. Out of the hundreds of women taken to the palace, the king selected Esther. They were married in a few days. In the meantime, Haman was made the minister. Haman, the wisest of all men and our most trusted servant, is appointed today as the prime minister. He shall be the third most powerful person in the empire. Thank you, my lord. From today, all of you must honor and obey Haman. <laughs> I am closer to becoming the next king, you fool. As years passed, Haman's pride and arrogance increased with his power. People had to bow down to him whenever he passed by. Long live Haman! Long live Haman! Hey, look! It's Haman! Come on! Bow down! Quick! Mordecai, kneel down! No, I will not! Ha! Huh. How dare he keep standing? I'll make him pay for his arrogance! Mordecai, what were you thinking? Don't you know that you are supposed to bow down to him? I shall bend my knees before no one but the Almighty God. Did you notice how the Mordecai insulted me today? Yes, we have been watching it for a long time. He's a Jew, and only the Jews are haughty people. It's high time that we teach him a lesson. You are the most powerful man in the empire after the king. Are you saying that you can't do anything against him? Hmm. You know that the Queen Esther is Mordecai's niece. If he finds that we are making plans to hurt the Jews, then he will inform the Queen and she will in turn to the king. We must turn the king against the Jews by speaking ill of them. Hmm. You are right. I shall speak to the king today itself. Haman made an evil plan to destroy the Israelites in his kingdom, and he went to meet the king. What is it, Haman? Your majesty, there is a wicked religious group scattered all over the empire. They do not obey the royal commands, and their customs are different from ours. Huh? They are dangerous people. I have come to know that they have conspired against you. How dare they? Find out who they are and kill them all. You can do whatever you think is right. Thank you, my lord. I shall make a list of these people and send out the orders today itself. <laughs> I have tricked him. And as per the king's orders, the announcement was made to the people of Babylon. Haman decided to kill the Jews by casting lots on the 13th day of the first month of the 13th year of Ahasuerus reign. A royal proclamation was made all over the Persian Empire. Command of the divine emperor Ahasuerus. It is our desire that all our subjects must have peace and prosperity. But we have learned that there is a group of people who under the pretext of religious regulations refuse to obey our laws. They are a threat to the peace and stability of the empire. Our wise and devout minister Haman has prepared a list of all of these wicked people. They will be put to death and here are their names. In deep sorrow, the Jews put on sackcloths and prayed to the Lord. 
On day when Esther was passing by, she saw Mordecai and she sent a person to him. Queen Esther sent me. What happened to you? Here, take these new clothes and wear them. This is not the time to wear silk clothes. Our lives are in danger. Here, please give the scroll to the queen. Esther, remember the days I brought you up. Pray to the Lord and speak to the king and save our lives. Haman is going to get us all killed. Huh? <sighs> what shall I do? I can't go to the king unless he calls me. He will kill me if I disobey. But he haven't called me for more than a month now. No, I'm not going to sit here and do nothing. I must do anything to save my people. Did you call me, madam? Yes. You should go to Mordecai and ask all the Jews in Susa to fast and pray for three days. But what are you going to do after that? After that, I'm going to meet the king. But he will punish you if you go just like that. I'm ready to lose my life for the sake of my people. Esther gathered all her courage and went to meet the king. What is she doing here? Queen Esther? But the king didn't get angry, and in fact, he was happy that Esther came to see herself. Queen Esther, you took a great risk by coming here without my permission. Don't worry, I'm glad you did this. Come on, tell me what you wish for. I shall give you anything you desire. I... I have a request. What is it? I want to prepare a dinner for you, and I want you to come to my place today. That's all? Ha 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 ha! It'll be my pleasure, darling. Is there anything else you wish for? Yes. I would be really obliged if you can be joined by our minister, Haman. Huh? Of course. Why not? Can you join us, Haman? Of course, my lord. With pleasure. That's all I want, my lord. Now, I'll go and start the preparations. Hmm. <laughs> The queen seems to have great respect for me. And she is so eager to please me. But that night, the king couldn't sleep for some reasons, and he decided to go through the chronicles. Hmm, those were interesting times. Huh? Mordecai? My friend? I'm still alive only because of you, my friend. I'm sorry that I couldn't see you after that day. But I can't remember what reward I gave him. God! Yes, my lord? What present did we give to Mordecai for saving my life? But, but, we gave him nothing so far, my lord. What? Even after ten years? How could we not reward him for such a great service? My lord, Minister Haman is here to meet you. Haman? All right, I'm coming. Haman came to the king to give him the list of people whom he wanted killed. The name of Mordecai was also present in this list. Haman! My lord... I came here to give you the list of people who we are going to hang tomorrow. That can't wait. I'm glad you came, Haman. I need your advice on something. Ask me, my lord. What should be the ideal gift to a person who I wish to honor? <laughs> Maybe it's me he plans to honor. The queen must have put in a good word about me. <laughs> hmm, hmm. Dress him in purple and let him ride on the king's horse through the city. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be parading the city. Very good. You must do what you told to Mordecai. Huh? But... Yes, we failed to honor him for his service all this while. 
what you said is the right reward for him. Thank you, my friend. Oh no, Mordecai! The next day, Mordecai was taken through the city riding on the king's horse. He wore purple robes and the guards accompanied him. That night, King and Haman arrived at Queen Esther's palace for the dinner. Hmm, this was a good dinner, dear. Thank you, my king. You can ask for anything, Esther. I would give you even half of the empire. My lord? My lord? Come on, go ahead and ask it. If it pleases your majesty, then you can save my life. What are you saying, dear? What's going on? I belong to the people who are on the list to be killed. We are all going to die, unless you help us. Even Mordecai, whom you honor today, is going to be killed. But how? Who dared to do this? Who is that wicked man? It's him, Haman, sitting right there. No, my lord, I did nothing. Guards, arrest him. Please, I'm sorry, my lord. Don't kill me. I'm sorry, dear, for what happened. I will never allow anyone to harm your people. The next day, King summoned Mordecai to the court. Mordecai in place of that wicked Haman? I hereby appoint you as the Prime Minister. In the matter of the Jews, do as you please and you can change the laws as required. Thank you. Once Mordecai became the minister, he gave out orders to cancel all the laws that the evil Haman had ordered. So, did you like the story? Yes, yes father. father. Hmm, so are you ready for the questions? Yes, yes father. father. Where did Esther and Mordecai live? They lived in Susa, the capital of Persian Empire. And how were they related to each other? Esther was the niece of Mordecai. She had lost her parents at a young age and Mordecai took care of her. Why was Haman angry with Mordecai? Mordecai refused to bow before Haman even though he was a minister. This made Haman angry at Mordecai. Very good, George. And for the last question, who exposed Haman's plan to the king? It was Esther. She called the king and Haman for dinner and she told king the truth about Haman. Very good, George. That's all for today. Children, from tomorrow we will start with the stories from New Testament. So don't be late and come promptly to the class tomorrow. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Are you bored, Matthew? Yes, I am. Huh. Hey, look over there. Wow, it's such a large fish. It looks like it will swallow all the other fishes here in the stream. Is this a small whale? Ha <laughs> ha! No, Matthew. This is not a whale. A whale lives in the sea and it's way, way bigger than this. Hmm. In the story Father John told us yesterday, he told us that a whale swallowed Prophet Jonah, right? Yes. A whale is the biggest fish in the sea. Is it bigger than the elephants? Hmm. It's very, very big than an elephant. And is it bigger than a dinosaur? Haha. <laughs> yes, Matthew. It's much bigger than a dinosaur. Oh. Now I know how Jonah could live inside the fish for three days. Hey, look! George is coming. Hello, George. Hello, Matthew. Hi, Lucy. Hi. Didn't Father John come yet? He told he will be telling us a story today. Oh, there he is. Hello, kids. I have brought something for you. Wow! It's a coloring book. And it also contains the stories from the Bible. Look here, this one has the story of creation in it. Haha! <laughs> Look here, it's Adam! Yes, and there's Eve too, here. Can I get one, Father? Of course, 
I brought these for you. Thank you, father. And here, Lucy, this one's for you. Wow, this one has the story of Cain and Abel in it. Thank you, father. And George, here, this is for you. The story of Noah. I love his story. Thank you, father. Remember, kids, you must read the book while coloring the pages. These books will help you remember the Bible stories that I have been telling you. Thank you, Father. All right. Now come on. Let's sit there. Everyone ready for today's story? Today I'm going to tell you the story of Job, a wealthy trader. A long time ago, in the land of Uz, there lived a man named Job. He was the richest man in the Middle East and he was also a royal servant to God. Job was very kind to the poor and never hesitated in helping them when they needed. Master! Master! Oh, hello Jacob. How have you been? No, I am in trouble, Master. I... I need your help. What happened, Jacob? Tell me. Master, my daughter is sick and I think she's going to die. Huh? Come, let's go to your house and let me take a look at her. Thank you, Master. Please come with me. There, that's my house. Come, let's go in and take a look at her. There she is. She, she has been lying like that for two weeks now. Oh, she's got a very high temperature. Didn't you take her to the physician? I, I... I'm sorry, Master. We couldn't afford to take her to the physician, as we didn't have any money with us. What? Why did you come to me, Jacob? Did you ever think that I would hesitate to help you? I'm sorry, Master. We already owe you a lot of money, and I was ashamed to borrow again from you. Hmm. You shouldn't have thought so. Anyways, come, let's take her to the physician. There is no time to waste. Don't worry, Jacob. She's going to be all right. The physician is looking at her, and she will be well soon. I hope she is going to be okay. Master Job, it's so nice of you to bring this poor girl to my place. That's nothing. But tell me, how is she? Her mother and father is anxious to know her condition. Oh, she's going to be all right. You brought her just in time to give her the treatment. She needs a few days rest, but she'll be fine in a week's time. Thank you, Lord. You saved our daughter. Thank you, Master. It's because of you that our child is saved. It's all right, Jacob. Come on, stand up. Job helped the poor and needy whenever he could. God had blessed Job with health and prosperity. He had seven sons and three daughters. How many men did we feed today? The dining hall was full today also, my master. At this rate, we will need a larger hall pretty soon. Hmm, that's good. God has blessed us abundantly and we must share it with the poor. Sir, I appreciate your intentions. But if we continue to just give away free food, then the poor people will become lazy and they will never work at all. Hmm. Why don't we ask them to work in our fields and warehouses? That's a brilliant idea, sir. I will ask our men pass orders today itself. Food for work. It's a great idea, sir. God has blessed us and our master, Job. Yes, there's no question about it. His business is going so well and he also ensures that everyone around him are happy. Did you hear about his orders yesterday? Yes, I did. It was so kind of him to offer work in return for food for the poor. No other rich man in our kingdom is as kind as him. Yes, may God bless him and his children. 
Job owned thousands of ships through which he traded with distant lands. He brought gold and spices from abroad and sold it to Arabs and Egyptians. Job also had thousands of cattle, sheep and donkeys. Because of God's blessings, he was the richest man in the Middle East. Almighty God, thank you for all your blessings. Please forgive me and my children for our sins. Come on, dear. It's getting late. We have to reach there before the celebration starts. I'm coming. Huh? Is there something wrong? You don't look all right. Hmm. I don't know. I'm feeling rather down today. Master, master, what happened, Jonathan? Why are you running? Master, your sons. What happened to my sons? What happened, Jonathan? Tell us. Your sons and daughters, they were celebrating at their elder brother's house. They were hit by a huge tornado, master. Oh no. Everyone was killed in the storm. Only I survived. I'm sorry, master. Oh my children. Huh? Who is that? Isn't he one of our men from the farms? Master, master. Tell me. What is it? Quickly. I just got the news that my children have died. Master, the Midianites, they they attacked us and took all our cattle and sheep. Huh? Wasn't there anyone to stop them? They killed all our men, master. Only I managed to escape. One by one, Job's men came to his house announcing terrible news. Master, our warehouses were burned down. Many of our men died trying to put out the fire. They robbed us. They attacked our caravans. They took all our camels and donkeys. What about our men? They killed all our men too. Only I managed to escape. Master, our ships. I don't know what happened, but all of them were destroyed in a storm. Job lost everything he had that day, including his children. But Job never lost his faith in Lord in spite of so much suffering. My children. God. Please tell me what's going on. God? Are you praying to him even now? Is this the reward that you got for serving him faithfully all these years? Dear, calm down. You shouldn't be talking like that. Calm down. You are such a fool for praying to him. Huh? In the Lord who gave us everything, and now he took everything back. We should praise his name and never complain. All this while, we had been receiving his blessings from God. Now, we must be ready to accept the pains as well. Yes, you go ahead and praise him. I'm never going to praise your God, your God who took the lives of my children. God, please tell me. Why you are doing this? Job then tore his robe away, shaved his head, and sat on the ground covering his body with ashes. Lord, and Lord has taken away. Blessed in the name of Lord. In all this while, never did Job blame God for what had happened. But Job's hardship was far from over. After a few days, Job was struck by leprosy. The disease was so terrible that his whole body had started to stink. Ah, oh, it's itching so badly. Huh? It's stinking here. Be patient, dear. It's all happening according to his will. How can you praise your God in spite of all this? Your God has been so cruel to us. Why don't you curse him and die? I am almost like a dead man. Even if I die and my flesh withers away, I will praise the Lord. You and your God, you can do whatever you want. I am leaving you. God, hearing about the misfortunes of Job, three of his friends, Eliphaz, 
Bildad and Zofar came to see him. Oh my God, what a sight! Come in, Elphas, Bildad, Zofar, you have come too. Job, what's happening to you? My God, is this the same rich and famous Job of Middle East? Oh, I can't stand the sight. Job's friends couldn't stand the sight of Job's sufferings, and in pain, they tore their robes open. They sat near Job for seven days in silence. They wept for him, for they could see the pain Job was going through. And at the end of seven days, Ah, oh Lord, I'm tired. I cannot go on like this. Please let me die. Let me die so that I can get relief from this pain. My friend, we understand your pain. Why are you losing your heart when you were the one who strengthened the hearts of many people? How can you lose your courage in this time of trouble? God will never allow a just man to suffer. You have no idea of my pain. Look at my skin. My whole body has become an open wound. I don't have any strength left, and I'm hopeless about the future. Do you think our God's will is under? Maybe your children died for the sins they had committed. But you should never lose your hope. If you are pure and upright, then God will surely answer your prayers. No, strangling me to death would have better than this never-ending torture. A man's life on earth is merely a slavery. I'm longing for my death now. Your desire to die is a proof of the sins you might have committed. God will never be unfair. You should ask your forefathers. They will tell you the same from their experience. You tell me, how can a man ever be just before God, who has ever defied him and prospered? I hate my life, life and death. It's all one to me. I am now declaring this openly. God destroys the wicked as well as the innocents. Huh? Just, just leave me alone. Let me breathe freely for a moment. All these speeches is not going to justify you. What do you know about God? Maybe, just maybe, you haven't received one tenth of the punishment you deserve. Just repent, my friend. Repent and return to Lord. Raise your hands in prayer and you will receive his blessings. Ha! Huh. All these speeches of wisdom, you are repeating the same old things that others have said. I know those too. I am innocent. Yet you laugh at me. Tell me. Tell me what wrong have I done? I was like the eyes to the blind, legs to the lame, and a father to the needy. I saved the poor and the orphans. I destroyed the wicked people. This misery is a proof of your wickedness. You took the coat of a poor man in a pledge. You snatched the bread from the hungry. You exploited widows and oppressed the orphans. Do you still claim to be just? And by now, Job was getting really confused. He did not understand what was happening to him, and he thought that God was punishing him without a reason. Lies! Lies! They are all lies! Even my friends are accusing me now. I want him to come down and answer me. And suddenly, Job had a vision. And in his vision, God answered Job's questions. Huh? Where am I? Job, who are you to question me and challenge my designs? I will ask you a few questions and you should try answering me. Where were you when I founded the earth? You say you have the knowledge. 
you answer me. Who set the limits for the sea? Will the sun rise if you demand? Do you show the birds their way in the sky? Do you know the depths of the sea and the width of the earth? Do you know how many stars are there in the sky? I... I am sorry. I don't know. If you do not know such simple things, then how would you know about my plans? I'm sorry, my lord. I take back everything I had said. I repent for everything. I was testing Job's faith, and even in sufferings, he remained faithful to me. My friend, please forgive me for what I had said. Please, pray to God for us. God restored Job's fortunes. He was blessed with many children, and he lived for a long time and witnessed many of his generations. And that was a story. Father, I have a doubt. What is it, Lucy? Did Job lose his faith in God when he was sick? No, Lucy. But Job was thrown into a bitter eternal conflict. On one side, he knew how God was just and kind. And on the other hand, he knew that he was innocent and didn't deserve to be punished like that. His faith in the kindness of God had made his sufferings even more painful. Job firmly believed that it was God who was punishing him, apparently for no reason. He complains to God, but God doesn't respond. And this made him even more confused and sad. Is that why God came and cleared his doubts? Yes, that's why he spoke to Job in his vision. The moment Job heard what God said, he fell silent. It was not because he understood the reason for his suffering, but because he learned that God's ways are beyond his understanding. But doesn't Bible teaches us that the suffering is the result of sins? Not always, Lucy. Look at Isaiah the prophet. He was a just man. But didn't he suffer for the sins that Israelites had committed? Huh, yes. Jesus, who suffered and died on the cross for the sins of the world, is the greatest example of suffering the just men had to face. Now I understand. Thank you, Father. All right. Now shall I ask you a few questions? Where did Job live? He lived in the land of Uz. Correct, Matthew. How many children did he have? He had seven sons and three daughters. Who can tell me the name of three friends who came to visit Job when he was sick? They were Eliphaz, Bildad, and... and... and Zophar. Correct, both of you. Now, I want you all to repeat this verse with me. The Lord gave... The Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of Lord. The Lord gave. The Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of Lord. Very good children. That's all for today. Tomorrow I will tell you the story of Tobit. Who was he? He lived a long time ago in the city of Nineveh. He had a son named Tobias who was protected by an angel. An angel? Wow! <laughs> I will tell you the story tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Bye. Goodbye, Father. Matthew, Matthew, open the door. What is it? Are you ready yet? We are getting late for the school. It's Sunday. Why don't you let me sleep for some time? Come on, Matthew. George will be waiting for us there. Why is he waiting for us? Doesn't he know that there's no classes on a Sunday? Oh, you forgot. We have Father John's Bible classes today. Don't you remember? Father John's classes? Oh, how could I forget that? Give me a minute. He always keeps forgetting things. I'm ready. 
Come, what are you waiting for? So it's me who is keeping you waiting now, huh? Come, Lucy. We don't have much time yet. Father John will be waiting for us. All right, I'm coming. Where's Tiger and Jimmy? They must be around here. Jimmy, Tiger, where are you guys? Oh, there they are. Come on, guys. It's getting late. Let's go to the church. What's taking them so long? It's getting late. Don't worry, George. They will be here soon. They should have been here 15 minutes ago. There they are. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Guys, why were you late? It's because of me. I overslept and forgot about the classes. Mm, thanks, Matthew. Normally, you would have blamed me. Matthew is a good boy. That's why he didn't blame you. Father, weren't you going to tell us the story of Prophet Zechariah today? Yes, George. Why don't you sit down and we will begin. The name Zechariah means the Lord remembered. Zechariah is known for his visions. In the previous episode, we saw how Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, destroyed Jerusalem and took thousands of Israelites enslaved to Babylon. Those who were exiled settled down in different places. Some of them sat and wept by the river Babylon. Hmm. How long are we going to mourn like this? Do you think we should start worshipping the gods of Babylon? Looks like they're more powerful than our God. No way. Our God is the one true God. We should never forget him during the time of hardship. Yes. It's because of the sins we have committed that we have to endure the suffering. We will keep praying to our Lord. Rightly said, dear. Let's keep praying. In the meantime, the poor people who were left in Jerusalem used to come and weep over the ruins of their temple. This was the temple of our Lord. This pillar, this pillar was made during the times of Solomon. This piece used to be our altar. Ah, oh, the Lord has punished us severely for our sins. Don't worry, Father. We will build this temple again someday. Yes, my son. Someone will come and help us rebuild this great temple. In BC 539, King Cyrus captured Babylon and issued orders to free all the Israelites to return to their homeland. Brothers! Brothers! There's some great news! Our captivity is over! Joshua! Is it true? Yes, yes, it's true. <laughs> God had heard our prayers. Yes, what the Lord had promised through prophets has come true. It feels like, it feels like a dream. Come, let's go and pack our things. We will leave at dawn tomorrow. The exiled Israelites returned to Jerusalem under the leadership of their high priest, Joshua. They travel for many days through the hills and the deserts. But when they finally arrived at the city, their hearts were broken seeing the condition of their temple. Oh my God, is this the condition of our holy temple? What have they done to our city? This place was so beautiful. Brothers, do not worry. We will rebuild the city and the temple slowly. Today, we shall pitch tents and live in them. Joshua. What about the temple? We build an altar tomorrow and offer sacrifices to the Lord. We start rebuilding the temple from tomorrow. The next day, they made a small altar in the midst of ruins and offered the sacrifices. Lord, please accept our sacrifice. Please help us in rebuilding this temple to its former glory. How are we going to build the temple now? 
We don't have any money with us. Yes, we don't even have bread to eat. Where do you think will the money come from? Let each family contribute as much as they can. We will start with those and don't worry about the rest. The Lord will show us a way. They put together whatever money they could find and laid the foundations of the temple. Lord, with your blessing, here we are laying the foundations of the temple. But even though the foundation was laid, the construction of temple didn't progress anywhere because of poverty of the people. That was the time when God sent another prophet to Israel, Prophet Zechariah. Repent and return to the Lord. Leave your evil ways and God will be kind to you. Who is that? Isn't that Zechariah, son of Edo? Hush, I think he is a prophet. Let's listen to what he says. Your fathers didn't listen to the words of God spoken through prophets. That's why they were punished. Don't be stubborn like them. Listen to what I have to say. We are listening. Please tell us what you have got to say. Hmm, listen to me. I have received visions from God and I will tell you about those. In this vision, there was a man riding a red horse standing in a grove of myrtle trees. Behind him were red, brown and white horses. The angel of the Lord explained that these horses were sent throughout the earth and found the world at peace and rest. But Israel was not at rest and peace. In fact, it had been exiled for 70 years and Jerusalem was in ruins. God sympathized with the Israelites and they declared, I will return to Jerusalem with mercy and there my house will be rebuilt. My towns will again overflow with prosperity and the Lord will again choose Zion. The message of this vision is that God was angry at the nations of the world which destroyed Israel and that he would bless and restore Israel again. In this vision, Zechariah saw four horns and four craftsmen. When asked, the angel was clear in explaining the meaning of these symbols. These horns represent the nations trying to destroy Israel. The craftsmen holding the saw have come out to cut these horns of the nations who tried to harm his people. The prophecy shows that God raises up powers to destroy those people who's against his land and his people. In this vision, Zechariah saw a man with a measuring line go and measure Jerusalem to find out how long it is. When Zechariah asks him where he's going, the man replied, I'm going to measure the city of Jerusalem. The city is to remain unwalled because of the great number of people and cattle in it. The Lord will protect her as a wall of fire and he shall be the glory of Jerusalem. This is an incredible prophetic statement because Zechariah was seeing his visions and giving his messages to the returning exiled of Israel who were in the process of building a wall around Jerusalem. The vision was showing that there would be a day when Jerusalem would grow to vast proportions and not need a wall because of God's protection. Though this vision, God showed him his blessings on restored Israel. The first three visions pictured Israel being freed from captivity, her expansion, and the prosperity of the land. However, in the fourth vision, God is showing him the eternal state of Israel, which is in need of cleansing from sin and reinstatement as a priestly nation. This vision is a bit different from the others, and there is no question about it. The characters are identifiable. We see Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest who returned along with Israelites from Babylon. Joshua is seen in filthy clothes because of his sin, but the angel commands other angels to take it off from Joshua. The filthy clothes represent his sins, and by lifting them away, 
It shows God's forgiveness and love. Once forgiven and cleansed by the Lord, the angel had instructions for Joshua in order to retain his new form. He said, If you will walk in my ways and keep my requirement, then you will govern my house and have charge of my courts. It meant that if Israel remained this clean and as a priestly state, God was promising that Joshua would rule Israel in days to come. In this vision, Zechariah saw a gold lampstand with a bowl of oil at the top, from which seven lamps were burning on the stand. Then there were two olive trees standing on each side of the lampstand with two gold pipes that continually supplied oil to the stand. These seven lights represent the eyes of the Lord, and they light the whole world. The olive trees represent the anointed ones or priests who stand before the Lord and connect Him with the people. The whole vision is connected to the rebuilding of the temple. It showed him that they will be able to finish the construction of the temple with the help of abundant supply of the Holy Spirit. The last three visions showed Zechariah about the judgment for the sins in Israel and on their enemies. In the sixth vision, Zechariah saw a flying scroll, 30 feet long and 15 feet wide. The scroll was not rolled up, but flying open so that one could read both sides. The angel explained to him what it meant. This is the curse that is going out over the whole land. For according to what it says on one side, every thief will be banished. And according to what it says on the other side, everyone who swears falsely will be banished. It will enter the house of the thief and the house of him who swears falsely by my name. The vision is a call to righteousness in Israel and the scroll represents the word and law of the Lord that judges the sinful. God desires that his people and his land remain holy. In this vision, Zechariah saw an ephah which is a measuring basket for grain, whose lid, when lifted, was a woman sitting inside. The angel told him that the woman represented wickedness, and he pushed the wickedness back into the basket and shut the lid. Then Zechariah saw two women with the wind in their wings like a stork, and they lifted the basket up into the air. When Zechariah asked where the basket was being taken, he was told, that it was being taken to Babylonia for building a house for it. Babylon is the place of ancient idolatry, so it was an after location for carrying out the idolatry from Israel. So this vision in short meant the removal of Israel's sins and rebellion against God. Then Zechariah saw four chariots coming out from between two mountains. In this instance, the mountains symbolize the righteous, divine judgment of God against sin. The chariots were going to execute his judgment. The first chariot had red horses. The second one had black horses. The third had white ones. And the fourth was dappled. It has been suggested that the colors represent red for war and bloodshed, black for death, white for triumph, and dappled ones stood for pestilence. The angels then told Zechariah, These are the four spirits of heaven going out from standing in the presence of the Lord. The one with the black horses is going towards the north country. The one with the white horse was going towards the west. And the dappled one was going towards the south. They were sent throughout the world. So in short, this vision showed the divine judgment of God towards the Gentile nations. The Lord will wipe away the wickedness and injustice from this land and purify you. Those messages are wonderful. Yes, he is a true prophet. All that he says is going to come true. Just like the words of Amos and Isaiah. The people accepted the teaching of Zechariah, heeding his advice. 
The people of Jerusalem completed the construction of the temple in a few years, and Joshua was coronated as the high priest of Israel. The Lord appoint you as the priest and the king of people. Zechariah also made several prophecies, and all of these came true. He had prophesied about a future king who arrives on a donkey. Many of them were fulfilled by Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Wow, that was such an amazing story. Yes, it was. So, you like the story? We loved it, Father. Shall I ask you a few questions then? Yes, Father. All right. Now, who can tell me the meaning of the name Zechariah? It means the Lord remembers. Correct, Matthew. Why were the Israelites who returned from Babylon sad when they reached Jerusalem? The temple of Jerusalem was in ruins and their city had been destroyed. The people were sad when they saw this. Good. What was Zechariah's first vision? The first one was the horsemen among the myrtle trees. Good. And George, what was the second? It was the four horns and four craftsmen. Right. And Matthew, the next. Hmm. It was the surveyor with the measuring line. Correct. Now, who can tell what were the next visions that Zechariah had? The next one was about Joshua, the high priest. Then it was the golden lampstand and two olive trees. And the next was the flying scroll. Then it was the woman in the basket. And the last one was about the flying chariot. <laughs> Excellent, kids. I'm so proud of you. Hmm, that's all for today. I'll tell you the story of another prophet tomorrow. A prophet in a whale's belly. <laughs> what? Yes, I will tell you the story of a prophet who ran away from God. As his punishment, he had to live for three days inside a whale. Who was it, Father? His name was Jonah. Why did he run away from God? No, not today. I will tell you all about his story tomorrow. It's getting late. We must leave now. Goodbye, kids. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father.